Welcome back to Bitcoin Advisors channel. My name is Chris bringing it to you here from a paradise like nowhere else. Yes, it's Westlake Village, California. And I want to go ahead and start us off at the four hour time frame on Bitcoin. We're going to check out Ethereum, maybe some Chainlink, some Compound and uh, some Solanas as um, price action is... Uh, Wiping out some liquidity to the downside at the moment. So we got a four hour closure coming up in 27 minutes. And if we do close below the yellow 21, well, that would probably indicate um, a greater move down overall. However, momentum will cross back up above 34,000 and you can see this trend line regression was just broken on the four hours so um, as long as we're below 24 or sorry 34 129 pressure to the downside on our medium term time frame um, what else do I want to take a look at here? Um, let's check out this HPDR indicator. So hitting the bottom side of the range, and we could have just went for a liquidity grab to the downside. As uh, I will pull up the heat map here and take a look here. So I do think uh, short term we are in for a bounce. Why? Well, specifically all this liquidity hanging out here at... Um, 303 million. So people are still net long on Bitcoin. Uh, short liquidations, 157 to uh, long liquidations, 478. So, yeah, the, you know, to be fair, we might get that swipe down to 32.9. Maybe um, even this guy right here at. Uh, that's 137 million to the downside, 100x longs, 100x longs. So people got long right there. Um, I do think short term, we're probably looking at a bounce first and then kind of judge it from there. Remember, we're going into the weekend where price action is a bit <coughs> trappy um, and sideways, usually sideways consolidation, but overall, um, as long as we're just consolidating in this range here below, uh, sorry, 33.3 to the downside and 35,000 to the upside on Bitcoin, well, I would expect probably some continuation going into next week. What else? I mean, this does look a little bit more on the toppy side and, you know, may we take a leg or a quick bounce down to about 32. 2, two um, or that 33,000 pivot over the weekend. So volatility is still increasing and we have not quite crossed down yet. You have bearish divergence on the stochastic coming back from this pivot here and also Lots of bearish divergence coming back from this pivot over here. If we do confirm this as a local high, uh, that's that's probably too far back uh, for me to really characterize that as a, um, I mean, that is a pivot right there at 39,670. If Bitcoin is going to take another leg higher, another push higher, how much have we gotten so far on the daily volatility expansion? So taking a look really quick as volatility expands on the daily after being compressed and snaking around for some time, we got a 35% move. So that's technically uh, a little bit more overextended, if you ask me, um, for a daily volatility place. So what we want to see is this kind of reset just as it has on the four hour time frame. Uh, volatility came down. You want to see price action just trade sideways. Um, we don't want to see volatility tick up as we break this 21 exponential because otherwise that next target down will be 32,000. 32,000 and change. Um, and you will notice the PMARP is way down here. So this is kind of the only 
major warning sign in my book is uh, we are kind of breaking this trend line. These trend lines do tend to um, do tend to uh, you know characterize a break in structure. Also, this is a bearish look right here. So as price is making, let's see. Well, we got higher highs, so no real bearish divergence there. Where does the bearish divergence come in here? Well, we got this high here and this high here. So that is your shot to the 21. So as you can see, um, I wonder if I can collapse that down because it's... So two drives, uh, one high here, one high here, confirmed on this candle was your shot to the 21. I do think we will uh, put in a bounce here and probably put in another high and see if we can confirm it up here at about 34 um, and see if that lines up with any of the liquidations here at 34,730. You got lots of liquidity hanging out here on the upside still. So um, if Bitcoin's gonna bounce, well, um, I would expect some of the stronger altcoins to bounce. Um, that being your uh, Chainlink, Solana, um, Ethereum's been pretty strong, I, I would say. But something I do want to check out is the ETH Bitcoin chart. And attempting to put in a bit of a higher low. We got one higher low. Do we have a higher high on a wick basis? Um, I don't know if I would call that a higher high on the daily. Certainly do not have it yet, but... Um, you know, could this be the capitulation wick? Let's see where it comes in in the grand scheme of things. Um, yeah, I think we did say this on a weekly basis. You want to see that level hold. And really, we just don't want to take out the middle wick of this um, because, well, that would mean this is an M formation and this is coming down all the way down to not 0.3 cents. I, I don't, not 0.3 Satoshis, not 0.3 Satoshis. Um, so if we do get a big bounce on this one, which volatility is still expanding, momentum will cross back up above not 0.52 Satoshis. We are hanging on by a thread. We got two days left on this candle. So maybe altcoins run over the weekend. Um, just something to be aware of. Uh, also, tether dominance is looking bearish on the weekly. If um, And as tether dominance goes down, you expect your altcoins to go up, typically, um, alongside your bitcoins. Um, and Bitcoin dominance, uh, almost hitting our target, almost hitting the target. I would say continuation going in to next week would be likely, but Hey, close enough is close enough. And we are about to recover this last vector candle or whatever you want to call it. High volume red candle. Um, I think that's it for those guys. Also want to peek at NASDAQ, seeing how NASDAQ is finishing up the week and CMEs. So Bitcoin CMEs, we hit the gap, hit the 1618, got the rejection. Where did the volatile moves go and why potentially we could get that continuation drive next week up to 36.7? That uh, wouldn't be out of the, out of the cards. And weekly volatility is, I would say, going for the expansion. Probably going to close this week in the next hour and 44 minutes. Hour and 44 minutes um, is going to be nice for continuation to the upside going into next week, which it's going to be Halloween soon. Halloween. How many more days left? Well, uh, Halloween's going to be Tuesday next week. Do we have any economic data coming out next week? Um, I think today was a bit of a, oh, Michigan consumer sentiment. Apparently people think inflation is gonna be higher. Personal spending is up. PCE index up. So all bullish for the dollar. Let's check out on Dixie really quick here. When the dollar goes up, risk assets, well, they tend to go down and, um, 
that would be a bearish close for the week. Um, as volatility is increasing and we lose that level, probably gonna see some more downside and you can see our S&P target was initiated and hit. I would expect probably a bounce going you know, off of that um, going into next week, but back on a Bitcoin. So the decoupling has happened or has it, or is it just the beginning, right? Stocks are going down. Bitcoin's going up. Uh, the dollar is going up. Bitcoin's going up. So something a bit interesting. Uh, let's check in on our gold rocks real quick, and then I'm going to wrap this up. I, I feel like I haven't finalized my thoughts, though, on Bitcoin. And again, a 50% move, uh, I, I do think, is in the cards, and my internet is failing me now. Let's reload the screen as our link position is starting to perk its little head up here. And I do think that the slinky linky is going to um, continue to remain bullish with all the news out there. So that's Bitcoin dominance. Let's check out Bitcoin on the weekly. And, you know, if we do close... Um, above this uh, red candle here in the next two days and five hours at that that could look good for some continuation momentum will remain to the upside as long as we're above 27,300 and we have regained the PMARP and uh, volatility is officially expanding on the weekly time frame from the lowest level in Binance's history so could that get us a 50% move um from the signal given, sorry, I'm on the phone. Um, let me just text. Um, I said I'm on the phone, but I'm on YouTube. Um, so as volatility continues to expand, 50% move to the upside from the low would take us to where? From the signal given would be right. Well, expansion is happening right here, but let's, let's take it from this low right here. That would be 78%. So that'd be on the much higher side. 50% would take us up to... 40,000 bucks, 40,000 for the end of October. Can it happen in a couple of days? Do we have anything left when it comes to the daily volatility? Looks like it's beginning to decline. The two day will close in the next four hours. Any kind of a two day closure back below 33,000 and probably gonna get that leg down to 31.5 for a little dippy dip. Um, but volatility is still increasing and will remain up. Momentum will remain up as long as we're above 31,128. So that, that is good. And lastly, I'll check out the three-day Bollinger Band. Um, this is something that, secondary chart, in the last bull run, as long as the three day was closing above the topside Trollinger band, well, it was bull party for many, many days, many moons, many moons, lots of three day closures up here. And what do you know that that run started in October, October 21st, we closed above and uh, did not close below until November 2023. So that was October, that doesn't look right. From October 2020 to November 2020. So a month long run of just green candles to the upside. And generally speaking, as long as the three day is closing above there. And by the way, guys, this is something I also notice with the Bollinger Bands. When you close a healthy body above the Bollinger Bands like range 
which is this guy right here. Generally speaking, you're going to get the next leg up to 49,000 um, or the next kind of swing Bollinger Band high. So that does goose the odds in the favor of the Bulls um, when it comes to Mr. Um, I think I'm going to add a little bit to my link long. I've been waiting for this one to break out. Just waiting, 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 patiently, patiently waiting for that one. Um, so that's looking good. Let's see what the two day says. And we're still closing above on the two day and the daily, our first closure below. So the first closure below is generally a fake out. So again, why one more bounce up to 34.9 or at least the top side Challenger band, definitely in the cards. And let's just check out the four hour on the good old bands. And now you can see volatility has compressed on the four hour. MACD coming down. What does the weekly MACD say? Oh, finally flipping green for the first time in a long time. And this does look good for continuation next week, especially if we close anywhere above 32.5 this weekend. Going to look very, very good for some continuations to the upside. Um, all right. I guess I'll take a look at the altcoins for you and running the gamut on Ethereum. ETH Bitcoin, um, the weekly is not up yet. Let's see what the five day is. Five day is crossing up. Nice blue buy signal there. I think ETH does have some room to run. And uh, definitely, I'm going to put on my regular chart here. After this trap wick, bit of a bounce in play. Uh, that's Bitcoin. Let's see here. So, yeah, Ethereum kind of leading the pack here. When it comes to the bounce play to the upside, that is looking good. So far, so good. And I would love to see Mr. Link Marines, the Link Marines to get in their ship and start rowing uh, right now. We do have declining volatility, so probably gonna sell off this on the first pass. This is the 15 minute time frame. And uh, hourly, I mean, kind of bearish on the hourly uh, four hour time frame for link. We got 10 minutes left on this closure. I better take a look at the darling of the market right now, Mr. Chainlink. The darling of the market. And let's briefly look at TLT while I got it here. So TLT has not hit the official target yet. I would expect probably going to happen 20 year going down sorry that was the two year the 10 year and looking a bit toppy 30 year let's see how dixie is looking on the weekly close here dow is down pretty big today uh, all over the place i know i know Mm, Dixie. So putting in a higher low declining volatility um, on the four hour, if momentum does flip back to the upside, that would probably give us one more leg higher up to test that uh, green box once, once again. The day, a bit of an indecision candle, still putting in lower highs. If we do close anywhere below that last pivot, that would be, for me, a lower high in the making. And uh, momentum crosses down below 105.91. So do we have any crazy economic news coming out next week that could send the market to the upside or to the downside coming in on Monday? Monday, Monday, Monday. So I'm looking for red American flags. 
I don't see any red American flags. That's high, high impact reds, employment data, SMP, K Schiller, nothing really on Tuesday. So nothing Tuesday. Oh, Tuesday is Halloween, Halloween, Halloween. Uh, Wednesday. Okay, so the next big economic data point. So yeah, bounce it up next week. And then uh, Wednesday gets the midweek reversal. And then you've got the CME Fed watch tool, which everybody is saying the same thing. They're not 97% chance no rate hike. November 1st, December 13th. Now a 19% chance that they are going to um, hike rates December 13th. All right, so you're going to have to see how the weekly closes. As my link is uh, pulling back a little bit. So NASDAQ still got an hour and 30 left on the day. S&P is just getting shafted all the way down. And Bitcoin. Bitcoin is just holding on strong. I mean, Bitcoin is looking like this is just a nice little bull flag. And potentially, what would this look like? Bull flag, pennant, whatever you want to call it. That's probably not the way to draw it, the best way to draw it. Yeah, I, I think we get a stab at the range highs here. Uh, maybe even that wick at 36,000. That's on Binance. Where is it at on Coinbase? Look at the difference. 35,168 on on and that is looking you know temporarily like a bit of a w formation if we can put in a higher low in the next five minutes five minutes we got five minutes left on the four hour candle just need a little bit more of a bounce here and to be fair i think um i don't i, I think it probably looks something like this um down and then up maybe all right solana has trapped a bunch of people right here so probably short term heading up and we are about to take out the bear wick which is this guy right here back above 32 bucks and uh this one looks like you know probably going to put in a bounce up to the 618 which is going to be right here at 32.50 Okay, let's take a look at Link. The Link Marines are in full force today. The Bears are not able to take control. We are in a pretty sideways market, hovering around 11 bucks here for, you know, the last, since Tuesday. And, um... Yeah, what, what do I have to say about this one? I know in the higher term time frames, it looks very attractive. But this, hard to judge it. I think anybody right now who says they know what Link is going to do may very well just be guessing. But typically what you see when, oh, we're not above 90. So if it does cross down and you have that bearish divergence, which it will be significant, and you know, this one will take a significant leg down to drive down to the 21, 895. Would be a good area for a link to test uh, somewhere in the, I guess we did get a retest of the breakout level, which was right here at 960. So volatility is still maxed. That means we could get one more uh, move to the upside. Let's check out the secondary chart. First closure below is usually a fake out. So I think potentially one more push to the upside for the Link Marines. 
And where does that push take us? Well, I, I would suggest that uh, any kind of a closure back above 1137, we at least tap this guy uh, at 1198. Let's get back to the regular chart though. And we are breaking the 15 minute downtrend. At least this more of a five minute trend line. Um, let's see. What else am I looking for on link on the four hour time frame? Two big blue indecision candles, call them hammers, trapping people to the upside and the downside. Um, you would expect any kind of a closure above here, above 11 bucks, and uh, we're going to continue to the upside for maybe one more push. And where are these parabolic blow off? Um, well, it's not it's not over yet, but you can see we did hit the three the three one six eight after consolidating between $8 and $7 for almost two weeks. So where does the next push, maybe one more push up to about 12 bucks. I think there is a bit of liquidity hanging out there. Let's check out link. <clears throat> for some of those short term liquidation levels and the first one on the horizon at 1126. And then a small little batch up there. So a lot less volume here. People are definitely uh, net long, but uh, I can see that has shaved off quite a bit since um, this zone right here. So are we going to get back into the net short positions? We will see. We will see. Do like link on the weekly time frame as well. Uh, volume is increasing, telling us, hey, probably continuation going into next week. And if you look at the, I just showed you a four hour consolidation. We've got a deviation below the bottom side of the range and uh, we have not hit the 1618 yet at 1232. And guys, I, I think this one is going to come up to uh, at least this level. After this huge consolidation, I think Link probably heads up to about 25, 23 bucks this year. Uh, or, you know, say this year, I'd say within the next six to 12 months. Not financial advice, not a financial advisor, but. Um, that would be my general synopsis on Mr. Chainlink. So going to have some pullbacks along the way, you know, not going to be straight up to 25 bucks, but um, that one's looking bullish. Okay. Solana. Can Solana get back to 200 bucks? If it does break the all time high of 258, I mean, we are looking at Pretty massive move, 700% uh, gainer. That would be nice for Solana. Do I think that is going to happen? I, I, I honestly, I couldn't tell you. I could not tell you, but um, I can tell you this, that um, after the massive drawdown, I, I don't think that looks right at all. But back above this level, above $47, and it's probably going to move pretty quick. Maybe I've got to put it on log scale. Is that what the problem is? Mm. Not, not quite sure uh, on that one. Let's take a look at the daily volatility, which is... Continuing with the upside curvature momentum, when it starts to wane here, that's when you expect sideways consolidation, short-term pullback, and uh, D 
do we have bearish divergence? So yeah, it looks like we're putting in a pair of lower highs there, but higher highs in price, any kind of a closure back below $30. And next pivot down is uh, that level right there at uh, 27.29. I said, I'm gonna take a look. We did ether, did we do ETH? Breakout retest already um, pretty much happened here. So I think the next target up is that area right there. And that's probably, we've been talking about this cone shape here. Is the cone holding up? Depends on how you draw it, I guess. Is that, is that gonna work out? Momentum will cross back up, is crossing down, but will cross up above 1848 for Ethereum. And there's gonna be some slight divergence there. Two drives down to the 21. So any kind of a closure back below uh, 1756, and I'd look for that move down all the way down to the 21, um, coming in at 1676. So that's going to be a key pivot, and uh, we did take out the bull wicks. So what happens often is you take that out, you get one more throwback, maybe test that trend line, and then we come down. As soon as the RSI exits, which to me, this looks like it's getting ready to bounce. Um, you got rejected in the bullish control zone. Now the bulls are back in control. Back in control. So I do think Ethereum will run alongside Bitcoin next week if um, we continue to the upside. I think we did it all. We did it all. Compound, last one here. Compound, um, momentum still to the upside on the daily time frame. And rejecting the bullish control zone, but not putting in, well, there is your second drive of bearish divergence. We already hit the 21. So I'm leaning towards uh, more upside on this one if Bitcoin and the rest of the market continues higher next week. So just a short term consolidation and the four hour time frame is looking like a bit of a sell. Bit of a sell at the moment. But we are rejecting the bearish control zone. Oh, we haven't rejected it yet. So remember, after being a long ways away from it for some time, if we come back and reject, going to get a decent bounce and then kind of judge it from there. Mm, any other coins? Make sure you guys ask some questions. If you watch to the end of this video, make sure you smash the like button and subscribe to the channel. And I will be back on Monday with some more TA for you guys, uh, I think the last one to look at is Stacks. Stacks did dip its toes in the bearish control zone. Um, it is making higher highs and higher lows. So back above this last pivot at 66 cents, probably gonna take one more rip higher. Um, this one tends to follow Bitcoin and still holding the nine and holding the uh, the breakout level um, is beginning to look a bit more on the toppy side though. All right, that's it for me today, guys. I uh, hope you have a blessed and highly favored day. I will see you guys next week. Take care.